Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're working on a 2007, it's a Chevy Silverado, uh, it's an HD, um, it's diesel powered, not that it makes any difference, but um, the problem we're having today, and I'm sure I see a lot, of, uh, a lot of other people have had this problem also, is that the, the light on the dashboard lights up for its low tire pressure, um, you know, the, the normal signal for the, uh, for the low tire pressure. Um, but in this particular case, it lights up low tire pressure, but it also says service tire pressure sensor monitoring system on the dashboard. And no matter what this guy does, he can't get that light to turn off. Um, I've run into this problem before, um, and, and, I, and I know it's going to be a lot more uh, popular of a problem or a lot more common problem than it is right now because all of these vehicles have sensors in the wheels. These sensors all have batteries in them. When the batteries go dead, it, it doesn't send the signal back to the, to the computer to register the tire pressure. Therefore, it's going to show up the low tire pressure sign, and it's also going to show up the monitor tire pressure system. Um, you can fill up the tire pressure. You can do whatever you want, and it's still not going to register. This truck here in particular, most of the Chevys are like this. You can, you can go into the information on the, uh, the driver information center, and you can actually see what the tire pressure is. In this particular case, it does show up tire pressure. It shows up that the two front tires are, this one is showing is like 70 pounds, that one is showing like 30 pounds, which is got to be adjusted, obviously. The back tires are showing straight lines, all zeros, nothing in there at all. Um, so in order to make sure that the tires are in the correct location, uh, me personally, whenever I run into an issue with two failures like this, I recommend to the customer changing all four of these uh, tire pressure sensors here. Um, it's easier changing all four of them because, the, the, as you can see, these are non-serviceable. There is no way you can get to that battery inside there. All right. Um, so getting back to what I was saying is that the uh, the tires were showing that the two fronts had pressure, the two rears had no signal whatsoever, which indicated that the battery was dead. Um, if you have a scan tool, you can scan it. I did scan it and it came up with uh, two failure codes. Um, I don't recall exactly what they were. I'm thinking uh, 760 and 765. I could be wrong. I'm not positive. But those two codes came up and it was failures uh, for the sensors to, to, to send the signal back to the computer. So if you were changing just two sensors and not all four of them as I'm recommending to this customer, uh, what you got to do is you got to make sure that the, the, the tires are in the correct location because now it's telling me that the two front tires have, are sending a signal and the two rear tires are not sending a signal. But you want to verify that just to make sure. So what you want to do is you want to come inside the vehicle and you want to put it into the, to the, uh, to the relearn position and you'll lower the tire pressure down until you'll get a beep and that way you'll isolate where the problem was. Now this particular customer, I was doing that with him also because money was an issue with, with everybody. And um, what I found is that even though it was showing that the front tires had a good signal and the rear tires had no good signal, once I lowered the tire pressure down in the front, it didn't make any difference whatsoever. So I went to the back and I lowered the back pressure. And when I lowered the back pressure, the horn chirped, which meant that the sensor in the back was actually the one that originally was in the front. So had I changed just the two back sensors as the computer was telling me, I would have had the exact same problem and therefore I would have thought something else was going on with the vehicle. So make sure you, you find out where the sensor is located that failed first. And the way you do that is you put it into the learn position, which I'm going to show you in a second. And then you lower the tire pressure down on each tire until you hear it beep. If you lower the pressure in the left front tire and it beeps, then you know that sensor is working. If you go to the right front sensor and you lower the pressure down in that one and it does not beep, you know that sensor is no good. And then you repeat the process for the back. Me personally, change them all because if you change two sensors now, a month, two months, three months down the road, that battery is going to go dead. In the, uh, in the other sensors, you're going to have the light come back on and you're going to be going through the whole process all over again. So my recommendation, batteries on these things usually, usually last about five to seven years. This is an 07. 
is actually in the eight year range right now. So we're gonna change all of them. So I'm gonna bring in a truck. I'm gonna show you what to do and how to go about doing it. Now, I did already um, break the tires down and put the four sensors in already. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the relearn so you can, uh, so you can tell where each one of the sensors is located on the vehicle. So left front becomes left front, right front, right front, and so on. Um, it'll also register this sensor with your computer in the vehicle. Um, if you have the tool to, do, to activate it by the tire, great. Most guys don't, but you can do it without any special tools whatsoever, just by lowering the tire pressure. It'll be able to teach the computer how to, uh, to recognize the new sensor and to recognize the location of the new sensor. All right, so let's get up there. I'm gonna show you what's going on and um, we're gonna continue with it. All right, and as you can see, this is the new sensor after it was installed in the rim here. Um, and uh, as you can see, what I do is I always mark the tire the way I take it off, so I put it back on the same way. That re the rebalancing is a, a fairly simple process. Okay, what happens is you'll turn the key on, and you'll see this light lights up right here. That light is actually for the uh, for the tire pressure monitoring system. I've heard people refer to that as the uh, uh, the Pac-Man. I've heard people refer to it as the um, as the uh, the, the uh, of all things an octopus. But you know, I, I guess everybody has their uh, their ideas. All right. So what we're going to do now is you're going to turn the key. This key sticks a little bit. Sorry about that. Turn the key to the on position. You're going to come over here and you're going to press this button, and you're going to go through. Scroll through, and then you're going to come to this here. You're going to press to uh, to learn the tire position. Then, and now I'm going to show you. Let me just start over again here. All right, you come down over here, and you press this button until you come to this here, tire relearn position. Then you hit the check mark right down here, and you'll hear the the horn beep. Now it's in the tire learn position. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come over to the tire. You're going to take the cap off, and then we're going to lower the pressure down. So I'm going to do that, and you go watch what I'm doing. Now you proceed to the right front tire and you do the exact same thing. You let some air out of the tire until you hear the horn beat. Once the horn beats, then you move to the next tire. And now when you hear the double beep like that, that means that the uh, that the uh, 
that the tire pressure monitoring system has completed its um, when you hear that, that, that double beep, it means that the tire pressure monitoring system is completed and then we can turn the key back off. And uh, I'll show you. That's it, we're all set then. We can turn the key off. And now when you turn it back on, we're gonna go into the Checking the tire pressure. All right, shows the tire pressure is 56 in the left front, right front, left rear, right rear. So now it's recognized all of the tire sensors where they're located. Um, again, what I was telling you is on the dashboard here, it'll come up with the low tire pressure indicator right here or octopus as I've heard and down in here it's going to say service tire pressure monitoring system and it's going to continually blink in here um, while you while you start the vehicle up it'll continue to blink so uh, alright if you follow my advice you shouldn't have a problem you should be able to get through it um, just remember to go ahead and replace all of the sensors versus just doing um, two of the sensors or, or whatever uh, because the battery life on, on all of these vehicles is uh, is actually between five and seven years so you're going to see a lot of yeah, these. One thing I want to point out about these tire pressure monitoring uh, devices here is that as much as a do-it-yourselfer do would like to do this themselves and save the money you you are going to have to take it to a tire shop to have this done because the, the tire has got to be uh, dismounted off the rim to install the new uh, sensor and the new valve, which comes from the dealer as a complete assembly like this. But you will need to dismount the tire from the rim. So uh, what you'll need to do is take the tire to a tire shop, they'll dismount it, they take the old one out, put the new one back in, and then you can do the relearn position on the, on the truck itself and you can save that programming fee. Now anybody who calls the dealer to find out what they're gonna charge you to put these sensors in, by the time you get the sensors and you install the sensors, you're gonna get a quote of probably anywhere between $600 and $800 to replace these sensors. Um, I bought these from the dealer. I didn't buy them aftermarket. I didn't wanna have an issue with it. The price difference was really not that much. The dealer wasn't that cheap. They were pretty expensive. But at least I know it's done. It's done one time, and we're not going to have to worry about it. Um, one of these sensors in here was replaced at one time. It was a different sensor than this. Where he got it or he got, who he got it from, no idea. Uh, what I do know is it was not a factory sensor, um, and that was one of them that actually failed. So um, a little recommendation is you're going to do it. Get it from the dealer. Don't play around. Get, well, let me re rephrase that. Either you buy it from a dealer or you can buy it online. But in this particular case, it was a, a GM or an AC Delco. Um, it's the original factory part. So uh, just my recommendation. I, I, I like to do the job one time, out the door, and I won't see it again, well, for at least another seven years anyway. So, uh, all right, let me, I, I'm sure you know where these are located. Is where you put your air in your tire right here. And, uh, and that's it. All right, but you will have to bring it to a tire shop and, uh, and have that done. But the reprogramming, you can do yourself. Take it to a tire shop. They're probably going to charge you 30 40 bucks per tire to put these in because they have to dismount it, um, put the new valve in, and then the tire's got to be rebalanced also. All right, so, uh, all right, I hope to help you out. And uh, all right, let's continue. All right, so, uh, all right, um, what we're going to do now is that we have everything all reset in here. We are going to check the tire pressure to make sure it's at the factory specs. And where you get the factory specs for the tire pressure is you come in, open up the door here, and you'll see down on the, on the door itself, right in here, it'll tell you what the tire pressure is. Now in this particular case, it calls for 60 in the front and 80 in the back because they're light truck tires. So. Uh, Last thing we're going to do now is we're going to readjust our tire pressure and then we're going to get this truck out, return it to the customer, and then we're on to the next one, which I was hoping to film, but 
I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. I'm a little bit jammed All right, so up here any today. questions or any comments, you drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.